Am I good? Can you see me? Okay. Hello, everyone. So today we're in the kitchen. I'm going to kind of like give you a whole look around. We've done videos in here before, but I've never shown you inside every single drawer, every single cabinet, even the ones that sometimes get shameful. And I'm not doing this like, let me clean my kitchen and show off like this unrealistic, you know, pretty organization that isn't useful, which I think, just to be honest, a lot of stuff that you see is like that. Early on in, I hate to keep referencing this, but like early on in lockdown, right? We were all cleaning. We were all organizing. We were all stuck in our homes. And like, you know, I'm, I've always been someone that likes to organize, that likes a nice looking home, that likes a nice feeling home. But I really kind of like stepped up the kitchen during that time and really just thought about it in a different way, really like made some systems and redid cabinets and stuff that worked for me. And they have worked for me because almost, well, yeah, two years later, they're exactly the same as they were, especially like where I keep my spices, where I actually cook. And when you actually get something in a nicely and well-organized state that truly is working for you, you'll find yourself never having to clean up. So if you're always like, okay, well, the organization lasts for a little bit, but then I always have to end up, you know, rearranging or reorganizing, well, then it's not working for you. The point of like having a nice, well-organized space is so that, okay, well, now I know when this comes in, I have somewhere to put it. Do you know what I'm saying? If you see things piling up or you kind of find an area that gets a little out of control a lot, then you probably don't have a good designated spot for those types of things. Do you know what I mean? So I guess I want to show you this because it's been working for me and I do think there's a lot of unrealistic things, especially nowadays when you see, you know, we've talked about this before, we've talked about this on our podcast, we've talked about this here too, what Instagram has done to people's expectations of what homes should look like, what kitchens, what closets, and I like a pretty space, I'm going to design a pretty space if I want to do that, but, um, you know, when we did our kitchen years back, sure, like I think now, are there certain things, I sure, you know, but I love it, it's, it really works well for us. And our home was not built at a time when people were putting in mega pantries and huge mud, mud rooms were not a thing, you know what I mean? Um, but then other areas of my house have things that maybe those don't have. So it's just not all of us are freshly building a home with an Instagram pantry, okay? You may have a beautiful, nice home, but you don't have that. And don't let that make you feel like, oh, well, I have no kitchen organization or, oh, I can't... Because what I found, and um, years ago we were talking to a builder that we were looking at a design for a home that had literally in the plans, it was called Mega Pantry, okay? And in that particular plan, he was like, yeah, but the trade-off is there's no kitchen cabinets in here. He's like, look around. You've got this mega island. Think about someone that you might follow on Instagram with the most dreamy pantry. Really look at their kitchen. Sure, it's huge. The, the scale is grand. It's showy. Everything might be bigger. But really, they don't have any storage. It's a lot of open shelving. It might be built-in appliances or built-in a fridge or, you know, they really don't have a lot of cabinet space. Their island might be, like, massive, but the sink takes up most of it. And then a dishwasher, it's all plumbing or a nook for stools. So look at your kitchen a little differently. And I and I do. I You know, we have a reach-in pantry that's decent and nice, and I want to show you what I've done in there. But we have a ton of cabinets that you may not have had if you built a big pantry. You know, so it's, it's kind of a trade-off. A lot of times you see those giant pantries and you really look at the things that they're keeping in those pantries are the things I have in my kitchen cabinets. Like, I'm like, what would I have in my kitchen cabinets, you know? So I kind of want to show you that. I want to make you feel good about your kitchen and organizing. And we'll breeze through that, okay? But I have a friend, the best friend who, she watches my videos, you know, but like rarely will she be like, like she'll kind of joke with me. She's like, I'm putting in a video request. She was like, how the hell do you keep your house smelling good and looking good with a dog? Cause Waylon is big and he smells. Sorry, Waylon, he's a dog, okay? Dogs smell. Yummy puppy. It's a beautiful smell, but you don't want your home to smell like that. So my friend has two giant dogs and she really struggles with that. And, um, I have some really good tips, 
okay, and some cleaning products. I do have a cleaning video from a few years ago, and honestly, nothing much has changed. I keep all my cleaning products here, which I'll show you. Um, of course, in bathrooms, I have toilet cleaner in every bathroom, countertop spray in every bathroom, the disinfectant. Don't be running downstairs to get that. You, you feel me. Um, and then in the laundry room, I brought my basket in here where I keep uh, laundry stuff. We're kind of doing something different in the laundry room, and that's kind of our next stop on like redoing stuff in the house. So we'll get to that. So this video is going to be a lot. Um, I want to talk first about the whole smell and puppies and kids and keeping your home looking and smelling good. Okay, and it may not be what you think. And these tips actually work, okay? I'm going to show you the products that I really like. That. Okay. Um, before I get started, I always, it's awkward in here because it's like, I want to like get on the island to get closer, but then if I get it's just a whole mess. Um, I will link to this top. I have been looking for like another oversized top like this because I have one that's this color, but it's a little shorter than I'd like. And I really liked the vibe of this one, how it's really long. You could tuck in just the front, leave the back. You could unbutton this and because there's such a large like, um, slit there you could tie the front of it but it's just such an easy like just nice classic like men's looking shirt I will get close for these because I think this is um these are important oh hello you guys I will put a link to these below these I was like is this too much to wear with it but I kind of like them cute little earrings for Valentine's Day um, my little Olivia bracelet haven't worn that much so I thought I'd bust that out. But anyways, I'll link to that stuff. Okay. Um, guys, I'm so excited about this. I really am. Because I feel like I've been teasing this kitchen video forever. And I think this kind of goes hand in hand. Okay, so let's get into the smell. If you have a dog, your house is going to smell. My parents have teeny tiny dogs. Little dogs smell. Big dogs smell. If you have a cat. If you have a cat, a whole other thing. I've never owned a cat. Just because you have an animal doesn't mean your house has to smell like it. Now, I think people go a route of well, what kind of cleaning products do you use, which I'm going to tell you. But also, it's not so much about that. And it's not about masking the smell. There's not some magic spray that you're gonna spray. Febreze I do like, and I keep all my Febreze, Febreze type stuff in the laundry room basket, because my laundry room's like right there. I like this one. It's the heavy duty fabric. It's nice to use on upholstery. Obviously, obviously it's Febreze, okay. But if you have a skanky, smell, a skanky smelling couch, rug this ain't a miracle worker okay but this is going to be good just for like maintaining okay if you get a stinky ass couch it's time to get a new couch i'm sorry i'm gonna say it in our living room wayland light i say I always joke that's the fancy not fancy but it's the most like doo -doo -doo looking little room keep covers on your furniture not like slip what should i say not like slip covers or grandma plastic get a beautiful throw i will link to the one that i have in there it looks like boucle like my chairs it's beautiful i leave that on there i know at the second we leave the house wayland's real shy when we're home we never tell him not to get on the couches but i think he just really when we leave he just has a party and i know he's going to get on the couches it's fine but just always have a cover that way you can wash the blankets often because the smell from your dog you can have the cleanest dog on earth sometimes clean dogs i think smell even worse because i hate that like clean wet dog smell um i'd rather just, just like smell like a sweet dog that's gonna transfer okay it's gonna transfer the smell will transfer so that couch He's not on it all the time, but I do have a cover. Now, a family room couch. If you are going hard on that couch every day like we do, we have no rules in this house about food, drink, whatever. We eat, we drink. I vacuum like a pound of snacks out of that couch every week. Okay, it just is what it is. You've got to buy nice things, but you've also got to think that smelly ass couch is the culprit of your smells. Your carpet is the culprit of your smells. Look around and think, is this carpet really old? Might be time to pull up the carpet. Look at your rugs. Rugs should not be that precious. Maybe like in a dining room or a family or a front little living room, whatever. You could keep those much longer. Our family room rug, I'm okay with the fact of knowing I replace it maybe every four years or so. It's just a thing. And I'm not, it's not like, oh, you didn't take care of it. Good enough. No, I'm not buying a rug that's thousands and thousands of dollars. But I do get them like that are a good, decent price point. That's a nice, beautiful rug. But your culprit probably lies within the couch and you're just going to have to at some point 
be okay with getting rid of it if you haven't taken great steps to take care of it in the past. But you can stretch it out much longer if you take care of it from the beginning. Put pretty blankets on your couch if you know your dog's going to lay there. Maybe don't let the dog on the couch. I don't know. Vacuum it often. You don't think this is a thing, but dust and smells gets into fabrics just from like dust and smells. I love this thing. I keep it hanging in our um, laundry room. It's amazing. You can put the little brush head on just this without the pole. And I vacuumed the couch. And the first time I did that, so much dust came out of this. And like, that is gross. Okay. I remember in our coat closet, um, like by the front door, I used to keep our, before I got that, I used to have like an older vacuum that I would keep up there. I noticed all of our coats smelled like garbage. And I was like, what is this? It was the filter in the vacuum, just from the pet hair, from the dust, from the dander. That stuff smells. And it sm we had to get like all of the coats like professionally cleaned. And I'm like, ew, okay. Same with the filters in your house. People don't realize this, but you guys, Brad's such a psychotic person with changing the HVAC filters. Um, in your AC units. If you come into your house and you have a smell, guaranteed it's probably those. If you would replace those and get those nice, well then naturally your house will smell better anyways because that filters out like allergens and you know dander. We'll talk about candles and, and the fun stuff that we like to mask scents with in a second too. But that really does make a difference. Um, and nothing is too precious. You can always clean anything. But yeah, like your new couch or whatever, Febreze it every now and then. That is going to help. I do like these, the um, the Febreze air mists. I don't do a lot of air mists, but um, I do like the, the fabrics. Don't go into this thinking I'm going to mask all the smells. I think if you're starting from a rough spot, step one, change your air filters. Look around and be brutal. Does this rug suck? How old is it? Does it smell? Probably. If you have a lot of throw blankets, Waylon likes to lay on blankets like he has his own blankets. I wash them like once a week at least because those things start smelling so bad from like sweaty dog, like laying in his blanket, you know what I mean. Anything that you can wash, wash it often because the linens is probably where a lot of the smells coming from and whatever. Keep your house ventilated. Um, oh, and then I see so many people, this is another thing, okay, with HVAC systems, run that you know what run it okay i hate it when people have an hvac system and i get it you're trying to save energy or whatever ours runs all the time it's an energy efficient one and we have three giant units that cost half of what it used to cost to run one at our last house which was half the size so they do make more energy efficient units i'm not saying you have to do that but you can run a regular unit just at a normal don't think that you're doing yourself a favor by never running your hvac system like your AC and your, your heat and all of that, that's what's going to keep your home fresh, ventilated, filtered. If you don't have that, air that out. You guys know. Air the house out. Keep it ventilated. Again, that's another thing. If you're using fake scents in your house, any kind of scent, so you like to burn candles, keep it running. Keep your HVAC running. Keep your, you know, open your doors. Now, I know candles, everything, it's very controversial. It doesn't matter. The nicest candles that you buy, whatever, they all have wicks. If it's producing smoke, doesn't matter. They're, they're not good, okay? Trim your wicks. I love a candle. I'm not saying candles aren't good, but I'm saying I see people that are just so picky and bougie about ingredients and candles, yet they, they don't trim their wicks. And I'm like, well, you might as well just not even try, okay? Because that's dangerous. You don't want to be breathing in the smoke. That's what's dangerous, okay? And when you talk about the three wick Bath and Body Works candles, this one happens to match me really well. People are very back and forth, very like, you know, hate these, they love them. When you look at the ingredients of the actual uh, wax sometimes and you look at other ones, it's the way sometimes things that seem safe might word it. Oh, essential oils. Well, these have that too. Essential oils aren't always better than something. And a lot of people that are always so like, ah, gung-ho on essential oils, my friend just tried to get, got, my friend just got sold on a bunch of essential oil, or, this woman made her feel so bad and said, you're going to die. Your house is this and that and blah, blah, blah. And you don't know how to clean. You need my essential oil. I was like, let me guess. She was selling you essential oils. My friend's like, yeah, bingo. It's not always one thing. Or I think, yeah, make different changes. Do what you want. But I don't love a lot of essential oils. I do lavender every night just because I like it in our bedroom, like for diffusing. But if you're going to actually scent your house with essential oils, you have to put so much into the air. It doesn't last a long time. Um, it's just too much diffusing and I don't want to breathe in that many essential oils because essential oils aren't necessarily 
amazing for a lot of things. They can be very irritating. You know, you look up, are candles safe? And then the site where you're getting your information about how terrible they are or how great something else is, they're trying to sell you something. So be smart. And, you know, it's just interesting when you really break it down. The wallflower debate with Bath & Body Works. I happen to love them. I don't put them all over my house. I do have an option that I want to tell you guys about that I like too, that I'm about to kind of, I switch back and forth. But never put them in a bedroom. Doesn't matter if they're the safest thing on earth. I don't want scent in a bedroom like that. I burn a nice little sweet candle every now and then. I love like something just sweet and like sexy smelling, but no. It, and you don't want to be breathing that in. Keep them in a well-ventilated area. One will do ya. You know, you don't need one in every little nook and cranny, and I've been guilty of that over the years because um, they're exciting and they're fun to use. But when you really break down that and the safety of that, those are rated for actually consuming, like drink, you know, when you actually look at the toxicity report. Okay, you feel me. Don't drink. And, yeah, they contain fragrance. A lot of this, a lot of things that you use that are considered, everything, I mean, a lot of things have fragrance. Do your own research, do what you want. I know someone's dying to comment right now and break it down on what I'm saying. I'm not the ingredient police, but I'm saying be smart, okay? Um, but yeah, I do love those. But again, if you've got a house that smells like a dog and you put a plug in a wallflower or a Pura diffuser, it's just going to smell like dog. Your dog is at Bath and Body Works, you know what I mean? Um, I really like these, these Puras. Um, they say that the scent is, you know, totally safe for dogs. And these, I do think they do have better ingredients. I'm just going to say, I don't know. Safe, clean, great. Um, but I do love that they have a bunch of different scents. They have, like, the Capri Blue Volcano. They have all the Nest Holiday scents and the Nest Regular scents. They have hundreds, thousands, just so many scents that are actually by the brands that have, the, you know, it's not just like a line of Bath & Body Works scents. They're like, your favorite candle is probably like in a pair of diffuser. But what I really can't stand about these and what always makes me stop it is that you have to run them through your Wi-Fi on your phone. I like that capability because I find, obviously people like it. But I think, and, the, and the, these are expensive. It's like 50 bucks for a thing and whatever. They need to sell one that maybe is like $15, dollars $20, that's just a plug and go. I like that they have this capability, but if Pure is listening, please make a device that is looks just like this, works with all this, but it's truly just one that you plug in and that has a little switch on the side, low, medium, high, might even have one of those switch that's like on, off, or um, timer. Like all these dang battery-powered Christmas lights we've got now. You hit the timer, it's on for six hours a day. It comes back on the next day, 24 hours a day. I would like that in one of these. I would buy so many. It's just a pain to me. I mean, I I like them. I do think they're a little expensive. But I think you could buy, like, one and have fun with it. And it would smell up your house and be great, okay? But for candles, um, before we get into some of this other stuff... This one I really love. I like clean smelling candles. I love this brand. I get it at a little boutique that's close to our house. This one is in cashmere. And um, I believe they're like soy candles. I love this scent too. It's called Nectar. <sighs> Smell So apricot, wild jasmine, and white musk. It smells very peachy. Oh, and then their um, boxes and the packaging is so beautiful. It comes with a little match box. But these are beautiful candles. I did go into Bath & Body Works the other day because Libby had a gift certificate or a gift card and was so happy to shop and I ended up finding a few things. The sun-drenched linen smells like the best laundry. It's like downy April fresh, okay? And then they had a few of the, the fresh sheets. These were $6 a piece. Fresh sheets is good. And white t-shirt is a good scent too. So I walked by the... I'm not a bougie laundry detergent person, okay? I tried to go the Miss, or not Miss, what is it? The um, the Laundress about a year ago. I think I lost my, uh, it was probably a little longer than that, maybe two years ago. Like right at lockdown, I was like losing my mind. My friend was like, buy, the, buy this $50 laundry detergent. I'm like, okay, it's fine, but it's not like knocking my socks off. I thought everything smelled like dog shampoo. It's fine. I really love the Laundress crease release, nothing better. This is what I've been buying for a while for the last like year or so. It's the Tide Plus Downy. Really love this, okay? But then, as I do, I got a little wrapped up because I was walking through 
um, I think it was like a Publix or a grocery store, and as I walked through the laundry, this like hit me in the face because these were on the shelf, and I could smell it through the box. And just this box sitting in my laundry room smells up that whole corner of the house, and it's so amazing. So it's the Myers. Uh, these are the, just the dryer sheets, but it's in the lavender scent. And so I loved it so much that I ended up getting the detergent, which is great. And I tried to think, oh, I'm not going to use like a separate fabric softener. I really felt like I needed one with this. So I ended up buying, of course, the fabric softener. And this is a great little combo. So I do like that. But uh, again, I'm not saying like buying expensive laundry detergents and less. I mean, it's not that much crazier than like getting tied or something. The laundress stuff is a little ridiculous. But I do really like these. Uh, Brad's mom turned me on to these, the unstoppable. Did I get, oh, this is why it smells different than hers, but I really like it. So she uses the ones called Calm. And so I bought these a long time ago. And thought, ooh, I love the way this smells. It doesn't quite smell like Libby's clothes, like when she comes home from there, like when she washes stuff, but, oh, I like, I think I don't know. It's kind of neat to, okay, that's the finish. I realized it wasn't the same thing. So this is called Lush. And um, it's nice and mixed in with that. You just sprinkle them in the drum of the washer before you start. And then she also, Brad's mom gave me this too recently. The Capri Blue makes linen spray, like for your, and again, I love that. For like anything of fabric in your house, uh, covers of, uh, slip covers of chairs, anything, like I like to spray a fabric spray on there. I think that's a good idea. The multi-surface cleaner is good too, but my favorite multi-surface cleaner that does actually smell really nice and works with my glass top that I have on my wood table, works with my countertops, works with my cooktop, works with, I could use it on anything and it doesn't leave a film. I need to clean this right now, speaking of, is the um, the Caldrea, which is also, I think the Myers is made by Caldrea when you, this is like tearing apart, when you look at it, my, Ms. Myers is a Caldrea company, so I guess it's like owned by these people. My favorite is the Pear Blossom Agave, and it really holds the scent. Like, if you clean your countertops with this, your house smells so amazing. So I just really like this. So I just, I and mean, you might be looking at, like, duh, Tiffany, like, clean. But I just think that in a lot of cases, people look to, let's mask the scent. What kind of nice products are you using? Which, yeah, that's part of it. But you just have to look, I think, to some not-so-fun things. So let's go around the kitchen. Like I said, I hope this makes you feel good. Um, I love our kitchen. I that was like one of the thing, the things that sold me on this house. It wasn't like I wanted it when we moved in. It was beautiful wood cabinets, and we kept a lot of them because they were like upgraded nice cabinets from whoever built the house years ago. But they were white. But of course, we had them repainted. And this color is really nice. Um, it's Benjamin Moore soft chamois. It's not stark white. It, it's kind of a warm white and it's not just like a basic white so it's a good alternative i think people did a lot of like gray for a while that's kind of you know it's hard to get right um if you wanted something that was a little different than a stark white this is a good one but of course you know when we had our kitchen done gosh now it's been like six or seven years ago you know we had some more cabinetry built some things taken out a hood built some different things you know we got soft closed doors and drawers on everything and it had everything repainted and a lot of it was like built differently. Um, but I really do love this kitchen. And again, just the size of it and the layout, I really do like. Um, we'll talk about different areas as we go. Of course, there might be things that I'd wanna change now. You know, but I, I love our kitchen and um, I think that it's really um, growing and functioning well with us, okay? But um, let me move some of this and then we'll go through and look. So here is an overview of the kitchen and we're going to go through and look, we're going to look around. Okay. I'm trying to figure out like how I should, uh, how I should do this. Is this too aggressive? I don't know. All right, let's do this. Okay. Sorry if this is really bright. My lights, I think went out during the video, that top row of lights. These lights are possessed. Um, so those need to be fixed, whatever. So, okay. So, this little part right here, our um, trash is down here. I like to keep the trash away from food. Don't I try to keep it out of a pantry. I would much rather just put the, the trash in the garage if I had to, if I didn't have like a separate spot. Um, don't put it like where you keep food. And then 
This, I cannot recommend having a drawer enough for things like your storage containers. I keep napkins here, paper ones that are just close to our, uh, you know, where we eat, but just, you know, all this kind of stuff. Uh, baggies and stuff. And then up here, usually I have my bananas. Brad and Livy went out, so I told them to get me some bananas. I use a banana every morning for my smoothie. But I have all my stuff to make my smoothie, so I can just get it out, put it back. Towels, little extra stuff up there. And then under here is where I have like cleaning stuff. Nothing like groundbreaking. Over here, can I just like maybe not have my head like so much into it? Okay, so at the top up there, I cannot recommend enough. If you do a kitchen or whatever, make your cabinets go to the ceiling. We have really tall ceilings in here. And even if you have to like close them off, whatever, sometimes I think it would be nice because just I hate the de dealing with these stupid lights. These on here are fine, but like, I just would rather sometimes like if you just painted all that the same color, it would be kind of a cool, I don't know, just see with that X design, just painted, just paint over the glass. I don't know, but I like it, it's fine. But I keep like um, glassware up there, vases, you know what I mean, um, up there, kind of the same thing, extra. Can you see it in there? A little storage. Um, so yeah, don't waste any of your storage space. Okay, in here, well, he's loose. Um, this is where I have all my uh, wooden utensils. Um, in here is where I have my seasoning. I'll link to some nice little racks. Seasoning rack like that, like a little stair step one. I like a white one. I love clear for most things. Not for that, because who wants to see what's under there? The white, I think, looks good in a cabinet. Um, these little turntables for oils, and that's a little remote for our outside lights. Um, you know, like garlic, vinegar, salt, um, and pepper refills, and just some little bakers. And then um, in here is where I have all of our um, dishes. That's like a pretty deep cabinet, which I like. I'll be honest, like I didn't go through and organize or anything, so you're just, this is real. Um, and here, I don't like to keep my cooking utensils out, like on the cabinet. I have little bakers, little things in there. This is probably a mess. I need to put like something better. I just have it like sitting on paper towels. I need to fix that up. Pots and pans. Sorry, it's falling over everything. Um, more little stuff. Um, all of my baking sheets and pans. And then under here, like heavy big bakers and things, roasters. Uh, and then let me talk a little about, where am I? Sorry guys, it's the most like cinematic, like perfection you've ever seen. Bear with, okay, bear with. Um, I wanna talk for just a few minutes. As I have in the past on induction, gas, all that, People don't, still don't understand that induction is not electric. Yes, it's an electric hookup, but it's not an electric thing. It, it acts and reacts exactly like us. If you're gonna consider maybe, that's it's a good thing, I would say. My mother-in-law has one. I really fell in love with hers. And now, you know, when she got hers, it was so expensive. And now they're more readily available. Like different brands have made them. And um, the cooking time, and the reaction is just like gas. So like, with an electric one, it sucks because like you turn it off and then you know if you need to adjust the heat, it's the eye is gonna hold on to the heat, so it's just impossible to I feel cook things um, easily. You can make them. I mean, the best cooks can have a. It's not a thing. You could do it, but like it's just not easy once you get used to gas. But what I'm saying is induction behaves exactly like gas. You just don't have the flame, um, and it boils water faster, which I think is really cool. And if you have like an enclosed area like this, or your stove, not enclosed, but your stove is up against a wall, it's like not on an island, the heat that gas and electric cooktops produce is a little much. And so um, induction doesn't do that. Like you could essentially use, it just puts heat onto the pot, not onto the surface. So you could essentially like move whatever you're cooking and then don't do that. But it's, you're supposed to be able to do that, I don't know. Um, Okay, whatever, something to consider, and I found, like, when you're looking at a lot of more current kitchens, more modern kitchens, people are going to that if you are concerned with what's in and cool. Gas is not going anywhere. Electric's not. People have been using that for years. Use whatever you want, 
but I'm just saying maybe look into induction. Um, okay, let's, well, I want to show you what's all in the island. Oh, and I skipped over one of my most important spots, which is where I keep, so appliances, this goes all the way back, okay? It's not super handy to reach back, but I keep things back there, crock pots of every size, right? Like just tons of like Mickey waffle makers and, you know, food processors. What's back there? A whole bunch of stuff. You want to see? A whole bunch of stuff. It goes way back in there. But that's kind of my little like hidden appliance thing. I've got my toaster and my, you know, little tabletop oven. And I'll be honest with you. I don't mind, um, I don't mind seeing an appliance. I think a lot of people are, you know, the idea is you want to hide an appliance, but I just don't, I like to have like countertop space and you'll see I have more appliances out over there. But if you're not using it every day, like toasters, most of the time, like we put toast in the broiler. If we don't, we're not making toast every day. It's like, who's doing that? We're not. Um, but I get it. If you do, you need that toaster out. Um, oh, I didn't show you this. Okay, so my pantry's over here. We'll get to that in a second. But don't think, okay, this is my pantry. This is the only space I have. Now, in this kitchen, I've got a bunch of um, cabinets. And there's even this whole entire island is full of cabinets. Don't think that's the only place that you can keep it. Because then you look at these big, again, like I said, mega pantries. And it's just a fake kitchen in the back. Like, I went to a home tour, and they were like, this is the show kitchen. This is... It's kitchen theater, kitchen in the theater is what they're calling it now. So you have this showy kitchen that's huge with a ton of wasted space, but then the real kitchen's in the back. I fully appreciate that, okay? Not knocking it, if I had that, I'd be like, this is the greatest ever, okay? Not knocking it, it's beautiful. But I'm saying if real reality, okay, like most is, is different, you can have the most beautiful kitchen, but it's, it's not gonna be that. It's like more of a traditional style, maybe like mine you're all good and you have just as much space and you may not realize okay so what i did is in this cabinet i let me open this up or raise it up so you can see again sorry i mean i'm just y'all know i'm very technolog technological here this is like my baking pantry and i've had it like this for many years i think it's just easy um i just it's not nothing fancy i just wrote on that like chalk uh, pens that wipe off all the time anyways um, lots of different like you know your brown sugar things that you use your flour oh that's great oh bone for Wayland for his birthday I've got a rolling pen we ain't using rolling pens every day okay so that's gonna go there um, you know just like some little things that you need for baking baking powder baking soda extra Splenda back there like for my coffee where did I refill it which I'll show you my coffee stuff chocolate chips cookie cutters I have a lot of cookbooks in the back back there and then this is amazing, okay? You want to get these all over. I have a ton of these in my beauty closet, kind of like this. Um, another one over there that I'll show you, but I will link to these. I've had mine for years. Turntables, okay? You want it. It's, it's good. But I have all, like, you know, things that you need sometimes, you know, like birthday candles, little, like, frosting tips, some sprinkles. What's that called? Food coloring. Um, extra oils, the big thing of oil for if we use our fryer, which that ain't going over there, you know, like where I have my oils with a little turntable. And then in the back back there, I don't know if you could see, I have a little white container that has extra sugar flour and stuff. But what my point is, okay, so like I have my spices for I'm cooking. If I had a fake kitchen or if I had, not a fake kitchen, if I had like one of those pantries that was like in the back, what are you doing? Like when you're cooking, are you running back there to get... I don't know. It's like you have to prepare your stuff back there. Don't put it in the real oven. Okay? You don't want people to know. I just don't get it. Okay. Let's look in here. I should have cleaned my cabinets. That's the one thing about... Um, sorry, you guys. One thing about having, um, like, white cabinets. So they can... Yeah, they do show everything. But um, I'm telling you, ours were done so nicely and, like, professionally painted so well. Like, they were all taken off site and sprayed. And then, like, we have some things that were, like, custom built in. You know, like, they rebuilt this island um, but kept, like, the drawer system because I really loved it. It's just nice. It's a whole different vibe if you get them painted professionally and they really clean well. And Okay, so here's what. Um, and here, can't even say can you. I have, like... Uh, mixing bowls, some like strainers, 
And then um, just this is a big old like mess of a drawer. Not really a mess, but it's just gadgets, you know, weird ass gadgets. And then in here, this is where our, um, you know, silverware, nothing crazy. And then this is where I really like this. This is like the best drawer ever, okay? So it has like this where I have cutting boards. When we first moved in for a while, I had like Tupperware and then the lids, but they would always get so janky and then I just have them all in the same drawer. What I like about this is this is a nice hidden drawer for your like dry produce. When we try to say dry produce, you could put um, onions in here, potatoes. Drive me nuts when you see people put onions and potatoes in the same thing. Why did I just say potatoes? Onions and tomatoes. Don't put onions and potatoes in the same thing. If you see someone doing that, it's fake, okay? These people don't really cook because it will, your potatoes will sprout and your onions will, it's just, it makes them ripen too fast. So if I ever, we don't really cook with a lot of potatoes, like, but if I do, I just put them in a bag, put them in the pantry, okay? Don't get fancy. But um, I even put like lemons in here sometimes, like if I know I'm gonna use them right away, I love like a uh, room temperature lemon. They keep longer in the fridge, but I feel like they juice better if you can leave them out and they'll last a little while in here. Um, tomatoes, do you have like peppers or something? I don't really have a whole lot of stuff going on. What else do I put in there? There's times when like I do have it pretty full. But as with anything, you just have to make sure that you don't leave that death tomato. <laughs> and then this is not organized well. But I've got like my salad spinner um, and then just Tupperware food containers. And it's, um, you know, they're just thrown in there. But I like it because at least it's like they don't need to be all like perfect. They're just thrown in there and it's fine, okay? And here I have like some servers. Some like some of my silver stuff, my cute little things. I do have like some servers in here too, like on this side I have some. Um, and then I keep my mixer in there with all the attachments. I have like a blender, like an immersion blender back there. If you can see right there, I have uh, this when I'm cooking. I mean, I use all the time to pull it out and it's all of my little measuring spoons. And then here I have like measuring cups and things that I can pull out from under there. So whenever I'm cooking, uh, most of the time, I'm cooking all the time on my island. And again, if you're ever like designing a kitchen, or not that I didn't design this kitchen, I mean, we could have changed things when we redid it. We didn't like, I mean, it was a pretty big remodel, but I liked where things were, so I didn't go nuts. Like, <sighs> guys, this is not like the best. Um, I didn't go nuts, like, let's rip this out, let's put this here, and I'm so happy, I, I like a sink with a window, I, I like that, okay. I don't like a sink in an island, I just think, put it in front of a window if you can, keep this valuable space, when we have people over, you put all your food out, I wouldn't want to have that, you know what I'm saying, and it's just so nice for cooking, and um, it's just, I feel like the perfect size island, it's big, but it's not too big, where you have to like, you know, you're like maneuvering around it like a crazy person. Okay, so let's go over here. I'm wrapping around this. I'm telling you guys, I may edit this and be like, Tiffany, um, no one wants to see like up your nose the whole time. Maybe you do. I don't know. So sorry about that. I don't want to offend anyone. Okay, so this is our pantry and through there's the dining room. But Here's what you need to do. If you have a reach-in pantry, which we have been meaning to redo this, it's cracking, it's, I mean, it's nice and wood, but it needs to be redone, and I wanna paint it like a fun color. I wanna add one more shallow shelf up there because that goes up so high, and it's just such a waste. Listen, I'm not in to fake pantries. I gotta rant on this for at least five minutes as we do. I don't like the fake things. You know you're not eating. If you are somewhere in a very remote area and you never go to the grocery store, then you need to maybe have like some things stockpiled. But that's just not reality. Things get old. We go to the grocery store usually maybe once a week here. Probably more than that sometimes. I like to pick up produce. You're there anyways. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you don't need maybe so much, but I will say most of us, if you have a pantry like this, which it's actually, it's bigger than the one at our last house, which was kind of also the same vibe. Um, get one of these racks so that you can take out all of your kids' snacks and my snacks. These are so good. I've talked about these for years. Get this Nutty Fudge Brownie, the Atkins and Thank Me Later. It's so good. 
my chips that I like. I have our little chip clips in a baggie to grab easy. Those are mine. Don't touch my Dunkaroos, fam. Um, things that my daughter can grab easily. And then I'll show you. She's got some more stuff over there. But I um, can't let him show you. It's not my pantry. Stuff, you know, canned goods, extra sauces, ranch, essentials, okay? And then also more essentials. Noodles, ramen, some baking mixes, some extra soup. Uh, stuff that we're using, like maybe our syrup and peanut butter. Chips. Chips are just, I don't know, usually they're just floating around in that pantry, but I put this in here a couple months ago and I like it. Extra cookies, extra snacks. Um, we really like ice cream in our house. We've got an assortment of cones. Popcorn, bread. I do not understand people that have massive stocks of bread. What are you doing with all that bread and how is it not going old? That's all I'm going to say. Um, and then at the bottom, this is so messy, but it's Wayland's food, treats. And um, I like his stuff in here. And then we have like extra waters and stuff down there. I don't keep like food, food for us down there on the floor. Extra waters and stuff. You need to have a spot for that. Um, and then again, like I said, utilize the rest of your cabinets as you would a pantry, okay? Because that's what they're for. Um, above our fridge, I have paper products like extra, can you see, um, extra, what am I trying to say, uh, paper towel, on the left there you can see I have a ton of extra, that's where I keep all the extra Ziploc bags, extra napkins, extra aluminum foil, that is one thing I stockpile because when you run out of aluminum foil and you're like cooking out or something, that's like a panic, so I always have a ton of aluminum foil, a bunch of paper towels, solo cups, paper plates go there but let me show you um because you know my kid obviously ow this thing's hot jeez sorry you guys my film crew didn't show up today okay god it usually films my videos just kidding just kidding um here's what i do i like to have you know the fridge is here whatever my kid uh, we started doing this when she was little I started putting the cereal under here where she could get it um, herself. Can you see? Over here is where we usually have extra Pepsi, but there's none in there right now. And then I have an extra Keurig back there that, like, if you have a guest or someone, you could put that little slim one, like, in a bathroom or something so someone could have, like, coffee. You wouldn't have to come out in the kitchen. But what I do is I keep, you know, the extra cereal behind those. We have goldfish. And then in that top shelf, I have, like, extra more ramen because what? Um, extra coffee, extra like drink mixes that we like, extra applesauce, I didn't know it was in there. So that's good. And then in here, um, there's more under here. This is where like I have china and stuff. I did have that in my dining room. But this was always like kind of exciting because it was kind of empty, you know, because I would even say I have empty, even more space that's empty. So I thought I'm, I kind of redid my shelves in there, like my new, um, like my dining room, new cabinet. And I put my... Uh, the china in here, which I think is kind of nice. And then I have like, if you can see under there, like some serving, like tiered serving plates and little dishes that I get out sometimes. Like if people are coming over, if you're having a, you know, a party. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So then over here, show you what's in all these old drawers. I have my coffee. Do you guys remember? Usually I have like little glass cutesies or just some kind of pretty there, but I like this at, um, you know, Valentine's. That is, if you know, you know about that. I'm not telling that story. This thing is huge and it doesn't go anywhere, but we do actually use the bread maker pretty often. Even I will find, let me tell you, so the bread maker is so nice and I will link to that one. Um, Brad really likes to make a lot of bread, but what is nice about that is yes, it bakes too, but what we found is that like we like the texture of the bread when you actually bake it in your oven or like in a convection countertop oven or in a real like big oven more so than in the bread maker. But what the bread maker is kind of genius for is dumping in all the ingredients, the mixing, the proofing. And then once it's ready to bake, you just get it out and put it in your own oven and it tastes better. Like the crust is better. But I love that thing. But it's just it's such an odd shape. Like it doesn't fit in my appliance section back there because the it hits that top, sh the second shelf, okay, whatever. But 
Um, something that is very helpful in our basement, maybe one day I'll share this with you. It's nothing special, but um, we have like an unfinished room like under the stairs. Not the part under the stairs, but then there's another part next to it. And Brad has like a workbench and like some cute stuff down there. And um, I got these really beautiful, no, beautiful, really nice, well-made, uh, those like from it's probably Home Depot or Lowe's metal shelves like you would see like in the back of a restaurant do you know what I mean that are just like they come in big boxes and then you put them together Brad put together a ton of those and so down there you have like cotton candy machine like things that you're not going to use all the time a big old punch bowl things that you wouldn't want to keep in your kitchen because you're like what and so um the, a giant air fryer things like that I keep that down there sometimes but I do find that we have been using that quite a bit so it's just been sitting there and it's not bad like it's not offensive looking okay um so in here I have my coffee tea you know all that good stuff and here I have paper plates for Olivia so she can reach them do you guys like hoard sauces from restaurants little things that she can get to um and then in here batteries you know, I need like to do, these drawers were all painted when we had our kitchen done, but they're like getting rough. I need to get like some drawer liners. And then pro tip, husbands need a drawer in a kitchen. Otherwise you're going to have their shit all over the place. And then when they come in and you know, they dump all their stuff on the counter, you just rake it in there. If there's a weird bill or a weird something that you want them to look at, shove it into their drawer. He's probably going to want me to show you his drawer, but here's his drawer. Okay. Every kitchen you need a drawer for your guy. Or, you, or yourself, your significant other, whoever drives you crazy in your house with their stuff, get them a drawer. Okay, there's a fish in our kitchen. Um, let me address this. So, okay, Livia never had a goldfish. She's a beta fish. She's cute. You want to meet him? Jumpy. Jumpy. He's really pretty. But let me tell you how this came to be. See, he's back there. He's okay. He's all right. Okay, so Jumpy came to be um, last March, and I thought, you know, where are we gonna keep this fish? And uh, once you set it up, like we just put him here. And then I thought, okay, well, we're gonna move him to her room. Well, then that one's like, well, he's gonna get forgotten about. Like, I just don't want him in her, the sound and the light. And the, you know, I was like, we'll just leave him here. So having a fish in the kitchen is not like the best vibe. He is kind of like far away. And you have to keep his tank clean all the time because gross, but um, she loves him. And he is almost a year old, this fish. He's like hanging on. Okay. All right, so I was editing and I fully, I was like, I didn't show these two. Okay, so this is where, like, this is, if people come over or, not even if people come over, but whatever, like, I'll set up drinks here. This is like the good spot next to the fridge and the ice. I even have an extra ice maker in the basement. We do have like a full bar and a, everything down there and a drink fridge down there. Um, but we have a nice ice machine. Sometimes I'll bring it up here that does like the little pearl ice or whatever. But because of that, I keep all of the cups over here. Now over there where I said there was glassware, just little fancy cups, little like, you know, my nice crystal things that I'm not using all the time. But in here I have the glass cups. These are so nice. I love these. I will link to these. They're so beautiful. Um, some little ones. And then these were actually very affordable. I have some nice crystal like that we got when we got married, but these were very inexpensive, but they're nicer, you know, if you did have some people over, like they're just nicer cups. Got coffee mugs, a lot of them, Olivia's cups, and um, even more coffee mugs that I probably need to clean out. And then, um, oh, I'll link to this Keurig too, because I just love it. This one's so nice. It's just the best Keurig ever. And then in here, it's pretty much things that we could use outside. The melamine plates, you know, around the pool. We don't take any glass out there. We try to be really good about that. Um, some extra little lunch boxes and storage things. Pineapple Willies cups, because if anyone lives anywhere remotely near Florida, um, you've got some Pineapple Willies cups in your, you know. Um, oh, this is the best wine opener ever. My best friend for a housewarming gift at our first house gave me the black one. It is still going strong. I have it in the basement, but I saw this white one. And it's not, you don't even have to plug it in. This one runs on batteries. Love that. Um, and Starbucks cups, uh, crazy straws, those little just drink things, little carafes, what are those called? Canteens, whatever. 
um, those kind of cups. Um, these are ones that we use outside a lot. We just have them in all different sizes, little plastic wine cups. And that is all of the drink stuff in that cabinet. Are my angles like the best or what? But no, he's he's fine. But I just wish we had like some other spot for him, but it's just, there's just not a great other spot for him. So this is where he lives and it's fine. But um, let me tell you about this section of the kitchen because when we moved in, I had like such a love-hate relationship with it because 90s, you know, if your house is built at a certain time, You've got a, uh, probably got a, what am I trying to say, a desk in your kitchen. So we were re when we were redoing the kitchen, we were going to go all the way across after, you know, we'd gotten the different counters and all of that, kind of the second time around when we were redoing stuff. You know, maybe you don't need this, but I'll be honest, um, I really do like it. Let me turn this off. I'm just like holding the camera now. Do we even need this? Ugh, I kind of do need to ring light, but whatever. Um, so here's what I did when... I found that we, we would use this. We come in, we put things down, whatever. It's, it is practical, but what I hated about it was that this, for the longest time, it had little doors and all this was exposed. And I'm like, I like having spots to put mail, coupons, lip balm, just little things, but I wanted it hidden. So when we did the kitchen, I had them make these like custom doors that were the same shape as these, but have a little something different just to kind of say like, this is a different area. And just kind of a cute little, um, what am I trying to say? Like a little, little element to the kitchen that's fun and different. So yeah, this is not food, not kitchen-y stuff, things that always come up about in a kitchen. Junk, right? You need a junk drawer with like wood stain pens, scissors, things that open boxes, extra nails, you know, what is this? Tape measure, screwdriver, candle lighters, all that fun stuff. Um, I have like hand sanitizer. A few like medicine type thing. Are those COVID, <laughs> some COVID tests? Sorry about that. And yeah, uh, yeah, our medicine cabinet's upstairs in our bedroom that has like most of the stuff, but occasionally you need an Advil or something, and I like having that on here. So, pet stuff up there. Um, look, the fish like has his own cabinet. And then if you, let me tell you, parents, you need a spot to put your kids' art. We always display things. Um, a lot of stuff we, we put on that little thing in there. That is so old. I had that in the last house. It was from like Pottery Barn Kids or something. Um, and they pop up everywhere. Like you see people using those and like designers using those a lot, but that is such a good bulletin board and I think they still have it. Um, I even bought another one maybe five years ago for another room upstairs in our house. They still sell, well, that was a long time ago, but I think they still sell them. You need a bin. I don't even know, like a bin may not even be good enough. You just need a spot to put your kid's art so you're not throwing stuff away. But like this piles up huge. Anything and everything that I wanna clear off or that, you know, you're saving it and then you can go through it all later. Uh, okay, what else? Um, packing tape. This is like kind of office-y stuff. Not office -y stuff, but like extra pens, Sharpies, um, address stamps, and stuff like that where you always know where to find a pen. And then um, these are Olivia's. She has, well, that's her fish food. Just stuff to do, her little nail polish, some little activity books, paint books, markers paint and then more okay just stuff for her to grab and do and then under there she has like some of her osmo stuff and then in here this is kind of like my drawer it's like shameful address book things to clean olivia's glasses um that was like a tracking thing uh just some like notepads to jot stuff down if you need to and then i just always dump cords in here and again like i said that's brad's drawer so i think that's a kind of a good hack Hack, I hate that word. Um, kind of a good thing to have um, in a kitchen. Have a drawer for everyone, and everyone has a drawer. Okay, so thank you for watching. <laughs> I kind of like it better without that ring light. Maybe I should have had it off the whole time because this camera does a pretty good job of like adjusting to light. Um, but I'm happy. To get through all this it's going to be a long video but i like to just kind of combine i don't want to make you i don't want to spread it out over a million different videos and have a video just about like pets i just want like super specific things we know this 
Um, but I hope that you enjoyed this and that you found it helpful. And uh, I love you guys. The next one's going to be a really in-depth video about organization, like beauty products, bathroom stuff. So I hope that you guys loved the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.